All right, you guys, so how does this apply to our biodome? We know how the energy storage molecules get into an ecosystem, but why were there not enough of these in our biodome? Was not enough photosynthesis happening? Were there not a lot of producers? What is going on here? We are going to run some investigations in the digital model to see if we can affect the amount of photosynthesis that occurs in the producers. If you have access to the digital model, you can go ahead and pause and go and, and do this exploration and data collection by yourself. If not, you can go ahead and follow along with me. We are going to go ahead and at first let the digital model run. We then are going to make a change to the ecosystem without killing any of the different organisms. We're going to try and understand how we can decrease the number of energy storage molecules being made. Remember, we are going to find two different ways that this can occur. So let's get started. So here I am in the digital model. Um, and again, I just wanna let things go first as normal. Uh, so we've got the, uh, the photosynthesis occurring in the producers, right? I haven't affected anything. We're just gonna let it, it run for a moment to have kind of a control to compare it to. But now we are going to try and make some changes. Now, I don't want to go ahead and kill any of the producers um, because that doesn't seem to be what was happening in the biodome. We didn't see that the, the plants were disappearing. It was just that they no longer were able to grow or reproduce meaning that they weren't able to make enough energy storage molecules. So let's think about what we might want to change. Well, we know that the energy storage molecules are being made in this chloroplast. And one of the things that we need to make the energy storage molecules is carbon dioxide. So I'm going to go ahead and trap bunch of carbon dioxide. I'm going to just hold it down here up in uh, my abiotic matter. So I'm kind of blocking off um, the producers from the carbon dioxide and we're going to see if they are still able to make those energy storage molecules. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we'll let it run for a bit. Um, and we can see if we click here that some photosynthesis is still happening. I'm going to pause it and let's go ahead and see how much. So we're really wanting to know um, about photosynthesis. That's really the key um, and we really want to see how many energy storage molecules are being made. We know that carbon dioxide is what we decreased. So let's go ahead and move um, and this and, and take a look. So here is the 20 time units. This is where I wasn't really doing anything. Everything's kind of stable. Um, I've got a stable amount of ESMs. I've got um, a stable amount of photosynthesis happening, stable amount of CO2. Now here is where I plummeted the carbon dioxide. And if you noticed, pretty much immediately after, the photosynthesis is just really ending. We're not really seeing any photosynthesis occurring. I also see that the energy storage molecules then are starting to be made less and less. So it does look like that when the carbon dioxide decreases, the energy storage molecules are decreasing because photosynthesis cannot really occur. Let's go ahead and restart and think about what else we might be able to change. So remember, we're not really able to kill anything, so that's not going to work. I don't probably, let's, I'm going to just click here. Okay, so burning is creating more 
carbon dioxide, which we just found out we don't want to do um, because less carbon dioxide is meaning less photosynthesis. So we wouldn't want to click the burn button. And um, so we've got the option to bury or to, to mess with the sunlight. Now, I remember reading in the Sunlight and Life article that the sunlight seems to have something to do with kind of powering that photosynthesis process. So I'm going to turn the sun off, pretend now that we've got night occurring and see whether photosynthesis can occur at night. So let's go ahead and take a look. And really we can, can look on the graph to see um, what's occurring. I'm gonna change things around. We wanna see the ESMs and we want to see the carbon dioxide. So let's take a look here. Okay, that's been some good time. So again, beginning, we've got our stable uh, kind of things happening before I made my changes to the sunlight. If we go back here, I see this is where I decrease the sunlight. Now, this green line is plummeting and that is our photosynthesis. So if you notice, actually our carbon dioxide is able to increase at that point. So it's not being used, even though there's a ton of carbon dioxide, the plants are not, or the producers are not able to do that photosynthesis process. And again, we see those energy storage molecules really starting to decrease. Huh. So what we're seeing here really is that carbon and carbon dioxide are really driving this, this process. When there is more carbon dioxide available, then more carbon is available for the producers to make those energy storage molecules. And the opposite is also true. We also saw that sunlight is important. When there is more sunlight occurring, producers can make more energy storage molecules. In fact, we saw that when there was less or no sunlight, photosynthesis cannot happen at all. So that tells me that photosynthesis is likely only happening during the day um, and that when there's low levels of sun, even if we have a lot of carbon dioxide, photosynthesis cannot occur.